Hello and welcome to today's episode, which is another installment on my ongoing quest of making crunchy snacks, both at home, vegan, healthier, and possibly a bit cheaper. I keep a little Google Keep note of all the recipes that come to mind and things that I wanna try out in the future at some point. And then my research panel on YouTube is telling me that tofu snacks and vegan snacks at home are all kind of being searched a lot at the moment. So I thought, oh, I've got a couple of ideas to try out for that. Both are gonna be made with tofu, just be slightly different techniques. So yeah, it should be nice and fairly simple to make. Just might be a little bit of cooking time involved, but the assembly, the prep, it's going to be fairly minimal. There is a snacks playlist on the channel, so I'll link to that down in the description for you. And if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the episodes, if you like this video, hit subscribe and turn on notifications, and then you'll be alerted as soon as a new one's ready. I've pulled a block of tofu out of the freezer, so I'm not sure if the freezing stage is going to be crucial or not. Freezing tofu forces the liquid out of it, so it makes it a bit firmer. So it's great for making kind of chicken type textures. Um, but for this purpose, I don't think it's going to matter massively. So use either fresh or, you know, out the freezer, whatever, as long as it's defrosted. I've wrapped the whole block up in several layers of paper towel and then just pinned it down with this pestle and mortar. And that's just been chilling out there for about half an hour or so. And then we're going to make one of the snacks in the waffle iron. So I've just been heating this up. This is a 270 gram block of tofu. The size that you buy isn't so important. This is just what I had in the freezer. The first one I'm going to put on is the waffle iron one, because what I'm hoping is that the waffle iron is going to compress the slices at the same time as drying them out and kind of adding a bit of cooked flavor to it. So I'm doing slices that are about two millimeters, something like that. And can you see the texture? It looks a bit grainy maybe. That's what freezing does. It forces all of these little air pockets in and pushes the liquid out. So it just becomes very tight. Maybe cut those into three vertically. So we've got a few kind of planky type pieces. The seasonings on this one's gonna be fairly simple. I'll do some garlic and onion powder, and then I'm gonna pop in some za'atar. It's a herb and spice blend quite common in the Middle East. Uh, different makers put different things in, but this one smells like it's got things like thyme, oregano, that kind of thing, and some sesame seeds. So it's got like a, earthy, herby kind of flavour to it. So it should be really tasty on here. I'll do like a half teaspoon of the garlic. Just break these lumps down a bit. Teaspoon of onion powder. So it's dried herbs, pounded, mixed together. So it forms like a light fluffy powder. Two teaspoons of that. So just give this a thorough mix. I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon of MSG and a small pinch of salt. So the salt is there to add a bit of saltiness and bring out the flavour. And then the MSG adds some umaminess without extra salt. So we put a couple of pieces in and then kind of press it in, turn it over. So the waffle iron's heated. Might not be able to get all of these in, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah, so that's left me with four little slices. So I can either do those separately or I'll just cook those for dinner or something. I'm going to try and clamp the waffle maker together. It's got that little thing there. And that's hopefully gonna kind of compress the pieces. On to snack number two. So I'm gonna grate down the remaining block of tofu, mix it together with some other bits, and then do that in the air fryer. It'll be a similar mixture and similar technique to the complete protein trio that I did. I'll link to that in the description. It'll give you some ideas for flavors as well. Feel free to do this in the food processor if that makes it a bit easier for you. But for this small amount, I'm just gonna do it on here. Any little bits that are tricky to grate, I'll just break those down with my nails. Pour in the tofu. And then into that, I'm gonna add some cheese, some grated vegan cheese. Five, six tablespoons of vegan cheese, something like that. If you're in the UK, I use the Cathedral City plant-based. It's got a nice tanginess to it. You can find a vegan feta. I reckon that would work quite nicely in here. And I'm gonna do some black pepper. Quarter teaspoon or so of salt. I mean, this is just gonna depend on how salty you like things. But that cheese is a little bit salty as well. Touch of olive oil, maybe half a tablespoon, just to help bind things together. I'm gonna to do a teaspoon of golden flax seeds. That's just flax seeds that I put in the coffee grinder. And once I add liquid to that, it becomes gloopy. So it kind of holds things together like a glue, really. You could also use ground chia. I'm gonna do some barbecue sauce, maybe two tablespoons. Mix this together, see how it's looking. I'm just trying to break the pieces up and compress it. Just decide I'm gonna add in some seeds as well. 
just for a bit of extra texture and flavour, I'll do about half a teaspoon or so of black seeds. You also see them as nigella seeds. They taste a little bit oniony. I've got a seed mixture here, Amiga seed they call it. Pumpkin seed, sunflower, linseed and sesame. So I'll put in probably four tablespoons. Just going to give that a try, see if I want to add anything else. Oh no, I think that'll be okay. I might go in with my hands. Just to really squidge it. Yeah, the seeds add a really nice bit of crunch. Not essential though, so don't worry if you haven't got them. It's always worth keeping bags of seeds in the fridge. You know, they'll keep for months and months and months, if not years, just as long as they don't go rancid. I'm gonna do them on a silicone sheet. So I'm just gonna pile it on here. Just start working that an even amount. So I'm hoping as well though, as it heats up, the cheese will melt and that will also help bind things together. I'm going to do them in the air fryer partly because it's such a small amount, just seems a bit daft to put the whole oven on for this, but also because the air fryer has such a strong fan, I think that's going to be really helpful in speeding up the drying out. I'm going to go in with a pizza wheel, just want to score some lines in here. Take care not to go through the silicone, I've learnt that the hard way. So I've split it down into little bits, it'll just make that a bit easier to to break up into little portions. So I've got that in the air fryer like that. Set that at 140 for 15 minutes and then we'll have a look. And then while we're here, might as well look at the waffle iron. At this point they've had maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm just having a look, make sure nothing's burning. Yeah, so these are gonna take a while. Because the bits I can feel in the middle, they're going nice and hard, kind of chewy. I've just decided while we're waiting, I've got the lights and everything on, I'll show you how to make a really quick dip, just something nice to dunk the snacks in, hopefully, possibly. Uh, be a bit of a riff on like a Greek satsiki, that kind of thing. I've got some vegan cream cheese. I'm just gonna use whatever's left in there. It's probably about a tablespoon. The vegan soy yogurt that's got no added sugars. If it doesn't say no sugars, it is gonna be sweetened. So if you can look for an unsweetened one, it's just got a much nicer taste. Good few tablespoons of that third of a pot maybe something like that crush in some fresh garlic I've got two fat cloves you can use the garlic powder again if you want not a problem got a spring onion I'm just gonna mince that down quite fine where it's got a split there I'm gonna cut those in half cut the main bit in half and then just blast through that and then just go back through that a little bit and then the grater that I use for the cheese, I'm just going to do some cucumber. So it's probably two inches or so of a cucumber. A bit of salt and pepper. And I'll use a fork to just go through and kind of mash it together. Let's have a look at things. So here's the air fryer ones. Still very wet. That's fine. I can see the edges, they're starting to dry out which is perfect. I think I'll go same temperature, but do half an hour. Let's look at the waffle iron. So there is starting to get some dark bits there. I've got a feeling that's the herbs rather than the tofu itself. I'm gonna pull a piece out and see what it's like. Let that cool down and then it'll give me a good idea of what the texture's like. The piece I took out the waffle iron <laughs> has dried out. Um, and hopefully, ooh, I'm gonna put them on a cooling rack and that'll help them dry out and cool down at the same time. I'll give the waffle iron a wipe and then put the other four slices as well. Yeah, these are nice and, nice and crisp. These are the air fryer ones after 12 minutes. So it's now set and firm on top, but there's still a bit of softness to it. I might try and get one out and then put that on the rack and see what it's like. If I try and get this corner one here. The texture is kind of stable, it's not just crumbs as I did fear at one point. See what it's like. Mm -hmm. I think I'll give it another five in the air fryer. Mm, maybe 10, the 130, and that'll do it. Once the air fryer one's finished, I'll pull them out, put them on the rack, cool everything right down, and then we'll pick it back up and do some eating. The little snacks are all ready to be scoffed. <laughs> and they've come out very well. To say that was kind of a theoretical idea that I had. There's a little dip. Well, big dip. <laughs> big old pool of dip. 
Gonna have a go on one of the waffle iron ones first. Softened up a little bit because they've been sitting in a pile with the rest of them. So I think whatever traces of moisture was in bits, but I think I can think of ways around that. Let's have a try. Mm. Mm. It's got that nice snap as you bite into it, but then there's like um, a little bit of meatiness almost, a bit like jerky and with that dip. Real nice. <laughs> mm. Putting them in the waffle iron because it's got those kind of square bits. It compresses part of it so you get a different texture within one piece because some of it's just the regular tofu within the other bit where it's been compressed. It's even crunchier. If you don't have a waffle iron, I wonder if you could do it, I don't know how you do it in the air fryer, but in the oven, put them on a baking tray and then put another baking tray on top and put heavy things on that. So maybe a few plates, a mixing bowl, anything that's oven safe, just to pin it down and that will give you some other compression. Um, or it's an excuse to buy a waffle iron. <laughs> That pancake mixture I showed you how to do a couple months ago, that also works apparently as a waffle mix. So, you know, now you've got two reasons to buy one. Go for the air fry one. Mm. I'm glad I had the idea to put the seeds in because they definitely add something. Bit of texture, bit of crunch, but some flavors as well, which are really nice. I was just thinking the barbecue sauce was maybe, maybe I put too much in, but with the dip, it kind of knocks the sweetness back. So it just becomes smoky. Mm. Some of the, Air fryer ones aren't completely dry. I don't mind that, I quite like the texture. Again, a bit jerky-like in texture, but if you want them completely dried out like crackers, I think in the air fryer, maybe 120, possibly 115 for 45 minutes to an hour. Give it a tiny bit of color so you get a bit of flavor, but dry them out enough because they were starting to get quite dark. And I thought, well, I'm happy with them as is. You know, this was a trial after all. So I reckon a very low temperature. You could even maybe go 110, just leave them in for an hour. Um, I'll keep playing with it and updating the pin comment. That satsiki is just perfect. It's very light and fresh in flavor. So it adds a really nice balance to the kind of quite powerfully flavored things. And that's gonna be amazing late with a beer. Oh, perfect. <laughs> While I was waiting for everything to finish up, I hopped on Google and both of these are gonna be good if you're on a keto diet. The only problem with the air fryer ones is the barbecue sauce because of the sugar that's in there. I looked at mine, it's um, Sweet Baby Ray's, and that's 41% sugar, which is carbohydrate. So either find yourself, I did see a recipe, I didn't look at it, but I saw it popped up as a result of a keto barbecue sauce. So these things are possible to make and I imagine buy as well. I also thought it could be interesting to try out doing a hybrid of the two with the chia seed crackers that I made. I'll link to that in the description. You add hot water to chia seeds and it forms like a big gooey, almost like a rice pudding kind of texture. And then you bake that down till it crisps up. So I think you could easily add the cheese and tofu into that mixture. That'll bind things together. Cause I'd use the barbecue partly for binder, partly for flavor. I'll add this one to the snacks playlist as well. What you could even do is, I think I've made like four or five different things at this point. I've got a couple of these big biscotti jars. This one's got cat biscuits in it, <laughs> but something like that and just put loads of different snacks in there and then you can just grab a handful of mixed things. And because we're making everything ourselves, we know exactly what's in there. So we can take the fat out if you don't want, you know, if you want to skip the fat, the olive oil in the air fryer batch take that out, that's not a problem. You might just need to add extra wet things to bind it together. I just put the oil in there for a bit of mouthfeel and for a bit of binding, but it's not an essential ingredient in there. So it's very easy to control. So you can do it no salt, use things like, um, you could do like a mushroom powder. That's got some savouriness to it. So you'd be yeah, very easy to make them very healthy, not a problem. The air fryer mixture, it's got like a crumbly look to it. So I wonder, if you're making like a fridge clear out soup, when <laughs> you just need to use up oddments of veg, that could make a nice topping scattered over, you know, over everything else. Maybe with some sliced avocado, that kind of thing. Might be nice in sandwiches as well, actually, because then you've got a bit of crunch with some lettuce, maybe sliced carrot, that kind of thing. Mmm, lots of possibilities with that one. Like I'm gonna stop talking because otherwise this video will be an hour long. 
<laughs> but yeah, I keep having more ideas. I'll maybe stick a few down in the pinned comment. So have a look down there. This section of the video is dedicated to my members over on Patreon. It's really lovely to have people who support what I'm trying to do. Help keep the fridge stocked as well. <laughs> I share behind the scenes content, viewers poll. We've also got a film and TV chat going on at the moment. And because there's people around the world, it's nice to get things that I might not have come across otherwise. If you want to join up, I'll leave the link in the description for you. If you're also a fan of all things crunchy, delicious and plant-based, like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you tap the little bell icon, you'll get a notification as soon as a new one's published each week. And then while you're waiting for the next one, get your teeth into this.